Hi everyone, this is a video for how to write your final paper, which is our final grade, our final exam. Uh, I'm in Google Docs, you can do the same thing in Microsoft Word. And the first thing that I want to do is uh, change the uh, line spacing. Um, I can make this a little bit smaller here. Um, I'm gonna go here uh, and I can change this in line spacing. Before I type anything, I'm gonna put double. Notice I'm not in the header, I'm just typing the name. So this is a terrific student. I'm just making up a fake name here. And then the next thing that is the teacher, that's me, I'm Ms. McCarthy. Oops, I can't spell my name. Our class. Uh, I have four sections of you watching this. If you are at 8 a.m., you're 01. If you're at 9.25, you're 05. Um, 06 is at 11.35, and uh, 07 is the later one. Oh, I might be getting that wrong. I think it's seven. Uh, but anyway, let's put, I know your OL, I'm sorry, your online one. But um, So just put what you have um, there. I'm going to put 01. That would be my 8 o'clock class. And then we want the date, um, and it's November 18, 2020. And then uh, I need to have a... Um, title, uh, and this one is going to be about why we should read them. I don't know. I'm just going to say why read them, question mark. Notice all main words are going to be capitalized. All words except for A, N, and T-H-E are going to be capitalized in your MLA title. Notice I haven't put any extra spaces, no underlining, no larger letters. You will not get your points for your MLA style if you do anything different than what I'm doing. I'm going to hit enter and I'm gonna change it back to the left. And I'm gonna to remember to tab when I do this. Um, the other thing that I want to do is insert my page numbers because I'm going to go to the second page at least. And so I want to do insert page numbers. And I want this one because I want it on my first page. So I'm gonna click right here. If I do this one, it's not gonna show up here. I'm gonna click here because so, I want it top right. All right, and then I'm going to get on the other side of this. Did you notice I just clicked here? And I'm going to put the person's last name, and this was terrific student. So we'll say student is this person's last name and a space. And I don't want a different first page. I want it just like this. And I'm going to come back out of here and click. And this is going to be on every page. So you should see your last name in this. This will make it not move. So now I'm all set, and I've got my indention. Um, going back to what I just did in the last video, I have this thesis statement. Listen carefully. This is going to be the last sentence in my paragraph. And I told you your paragraph needs to be at least three sentences long. So I need to, at least two more sentences before this one. Some ways to begin a paragraph is I can ask a question. I can make a statement. You cannot go to the internet and get some quote, okay? Now you could quote or paraphrase from Frederick Douglass, Malcolm X, or Amy Tan before here, but you cannot get any information from anywhere else. That is plagiarism and you will get a zero on your paper if you take anything off the internet and just pop it on there. I've seen a few of you doing that in your pre-writing for, for some reason. So please do not do that, get that out of there. All right, um, I have actually already written this paper and so, so that I'm not spending all night typing, I'm going to come and get um, everything before the thesis uh, that I've written and I'm gonna talk about that. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that uh, here. By the way, remember copying and pasting when you are writing because you might decide to move some things. I know when I was just writing this paper a little while ago, I decided, well, you know, this actually sounds better after that, but let's look at this together. Um, and I just changed my size. I just looked because I think I have the rest of it in 12. So let me change this to 12 so it's the same, so that it matches. Um, so I have some general statements that I decided to make about these authors. It is important to learn about others' lives. Notice the apostrophe. We've talked about those all semester so that we can understand them. Very general statement, right? So it's important to learn about other people's lives so that we can understand them. Hopefully, none of us will ever experience slavery. I'm thinking about Frederick Douglass there. Circumstances that send us to prison. I'm thinking about Malcolm X there. Or stereotypes that tell us we cannot pursue our dreams. That's Amy Tan. By reading others, comma, 
we can learn more about their lives and be more understanding people. I want you to notice that you can go right to your original thesis. I'm going to copy that right now because we want that to be exactly like what you've already turned in. Now you can change it a little bit. Like if you decided to change the order of the authors, like if you want to talk about Amy Tan first, you would, for some reason, you would put her first. And here is uh, my thesis. And um, just, just to, it's not really a horrible thing that I've done, but um Everything uh, needs to be in the same size. I'm changing that to 12. So here's my thesis statement. And this is like a, launching us right into our topic sentences. Everyone should read Frederick Douglass, Malcolm X, and Amy Tan to understand the hardships that they had to endure. This statement tells me I'm talking about Frederick Douglass first. I've already done that over here in my thesis statements. I have first everyone. So this is going to be my first sentence. So you can go back to your homework if you've got a up to 100 because you kept um, correcting it um, or you have that done correctly, you can go back into your homework document and you can copy and paste that. Notice that's going to be the next paragraph. I'm going to hit um, tab here for my, my paragraph and I'm going to put um, my thesis statement here. Okay. And so this is my topic sentence rather. The thesis statement is this one. And here's my topic sentence. And this tells me this whole paragraph is going to be about Frederick Douglass. And I have gone into the Frederick Douglass um, and found some things. By the way, remember, I'm calling this page one. This is page two, page three, and so on. Um, all of them are page numbers, except for the Amy Tan. We have um, paragraph numbers for her. So when we get to her, uh, we will see that. Okay, let me, I'm going to go ahead and take my whole paper and put it in size 12 so that I don't have to keep changing it. Okay, so I have my thesis statement and then um, I need to have evidence. Okay, so I'm going to come through and talk about this instead of just typing it all because um, this would be a very long video if I retype it all. I'm going to take all of my Frederick Douglass stuff and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it after the thesis. And so notice in this one, I am talking about why we should read him so that we can understand who he is um, and how bad slavery was. So we're, we're trying to understand how bad slavery was. So notice that here's the examples that I decided to use. Douglas first showed how badly he was treated when he described how his mistress first treated him well by teaching him the alphabet, but then stopped and changed because of slavery. Notice that this is a complete sentence. Remember when you have a quote, by the way, remember there is a document in course documents called uh, something about how to quote and paraphrase and there's examples and rules. Remember, you need to introduce it. So if you have a complete sentence that could have a period, this is when I can put a colon here. And here are some exact words that are from um, page one. So notice, and I just, I'm not going to do all of these with you, but when we come to this one, um, we can find, um, here it is, and entering into the duties of, uh, I'm like, I don't like, that might not be the right one, let me see if I can find it. So this is a good idea if you had, um, unlike me, if you had printed this out and highlighted everything that you use, then it's really easy to go back and find it. But let me see uh, the, um, in entering upon the duties of a slave holder, yes, I think that is the right one. So let me go back and look. Um, in entering upon the duties of a slaveholder, she did not um, seem to perceive, and so we used this here. So we want to make sure that it is exact. So make sure you're copying it exactly. Some of these you can copy and paste from. This one's a little bit more difficult because it puts some squiggles in there. If you do that, make sure you get all the squiggles out from between the words when you do that. So notice, um, here's the introduction. Here are the exact words. In entering upon the duties of a slaveholder, she did not seem to perceive that I sustained to her the relation of a mere chattel and that for her to treat me as a human being was not only wrong, but dangerously so. Notice that the quotation marks are on the quote. The number is here. This is on page one. And this is a period. Uh, notice that I am writing my paper in the past tense. So we will double check that as we're going to make sure that I don't have any mistakes. And to be honest with you, I found some earlier that I changed where I accidentally put Douglas Wrights, for example, and I need to keep saying Douglas wrote. Douglas wrote that his mistress would become furious if she saw him with a book or newspaper. Notice that these are my words. I changed what happened in the original on page one. But then when I said rush at him, this is language that Frederick Douglass said, even though it's really small, it's really kind of um, 
unique language um, that sounds like him. So I'm going to put those words in quotation marks. And this is also on page one. He soon realized what being a slave meant and the quote, thought of being a slave for life began to bear heavily on his heart. In the original, this said my, uh, these square quotes are on the keyboard just above the enter. So if you need to change something small like that, I changed my to his, this shows that you changed it from the original. Um, and notice that this is on page two. So you will find that on page two. By the way, you need to make sure you get your page numbers right because I go back in and double check. Um, he understood that he would be a quote, slave for life. This is on page two. He felt like he wanted to kill himself. On page three, he talks about that a lot. Uh, the more he learned about and thought about his condition, the more he was quote, led to abhor and detest his enslavers. And this dot, dot, dot shows that I have left words out. And he loathed them as being the meanest as well as the most wicked of men. I, I liked this because abhor, detest, and loathe all mean hate. So he's really showing how he hates his slave owner with that quote. Douglas showed the horrible situation that slavery put him in because it took away all hope of having a life of his own. So notice that this is, the, is my interpretation of those things that I've quoted. And then I'm, I'm kind of doing, I'm showing you, you don't have to have this much of a transition, but it kind of works here because we're moving into Malcolm X next. Um, Douglas was not the only man to find himself in a terrible situation just because of when and where he was born. And this is kind of leading to our next person who we will see. Um, we're going to pick up Mal Malcolm X next. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick up my topic sentence from um, my second topic, which is Malcolm X. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click return. I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to paste my thesis. I'm sorry, my topic sentence. I keep saying that. I'm very sorry. This is the topic sentence. The thesis is the last sentence in the introduction. But the topic sentences always reflect exactly what you said in your thesis. And notice this one is next. Everyone should read Malcolm X to understand how terrible his circumstances were as an African-American during the 1960s. And I'm going to come back and pick up what I've already said. Um, I've already got the topic sentence here, so I'm just going to pick up the rest of the paragraph after the topic sentence. Notice how the citing is done. MLA style, it's really easy. You're just using parentheses with page numbers. And Malcolm X also has page numbers. There's only two pages uh, in this one. So here is my Malcolm X paper. Uh, and it says... Um, because Malcolm X was an African-American man born in 1925, and notice that I'm using that from the original. Oops, I opened the right one. Um, notice that born Malcolm Little on May 1992. So, so this is um, from this, and I will go ahead and call that page one. So notice that we have... Uh, this one here, and it's in the middle of a sentence, and that's okay, because the rest of this is different. So let's look at this sentence again. Because Malcolm X was an African-American man born in 1925, he had few opportunities to better himself as a young man. We can kind of say this is that common knowledge thing. If you live in America and you know anything about America, you can only imagine 1925 for an African-American man. This is, um, you know, before the civil rights movement, well before it, we had Jim Crow in the South. So we know that he probably didn't have very many opportunities. Because of his circumstances, he found himself, quote, a street hustler convicted of a robbery in 1946. That's also on page one in the introduction. How could someone who later became, quote, one of the most articulate and powerful leaders of Black America during the 1960s, so notice these are exact words, be someone who had um, become someone who had become a common criminal? Oh, you'll notice I made a mistake here. I forgot to cite. And so I need to cite right here after the quote. Um, and I'm going to put a one. So if you had done that in your paper, and it's it's okay to go ahead and have that little one stuck in there in the middle, um, because the rest of it is my idea, because I'm asking this question. 
if he had oppor- if he had had opportunities in his community for education and a better life, he never would have ended up committing crimes and robbing someone. So this is my speculation. I think really if Malcolm X had gone to a great school, because he was really smart, which he demonstrates. So I'm going to show how he demonstrates how smart he was. He demonstrated how smart he was by teaching himself to read, by copying every page of a dictionary. Then he read every book he could while in prison and became very educated. This is on page one to two. That whole dictionary thing goes on for pages. It's on page one and two. And then this part's on two. Before he 